Today's video is brought to you by Eon Productions. They supply all of my paper and uh, some of my ink and some of the white ink that I use. So without further ado, let's talk about do supplies really matter? We hear it all the time, you know, like it's not about the gear, it's about how you use it. But let's just face it, gear is a lot of fun and I myself am a huge gearhead. I mean, I don't know how long you guys have been following my work, but I have been using Copic markers and, and inks and all sorts of stuff for years because I love experimenting. And you know, I'm not the only one. Like a lot of my colleagues love to experiment with art supplies. I think when artists give the advice or when people say gear shouldn't matter, doesn't matter, um, and this is only my take on it because I'm pretty sure there's a dozen episodes or whatever explaining why, you know, it's not about the gear, it's about um, how you use what you have. It's because a lot of times people, um, when they have art supplies and they have, they keep buying them and, you know, really the expensive stuff that maybe we're not ready to use, uh, it deter not deters, it basically... Um, we we focus on what we're using and these specific lines we want maybe and uh, how how a certain material is supposed to look and instead of focusing on maybe the fundamentals like composition uh light and shadow and um you know just the basic shapes and just the, the basic fundamentals of really good um foundations you know so this is basically my antidote and and my own story for where I where I was to where I am and my relationship to all the supplies I ended up basically getting. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to say that if getting an art supply is going to make you happy and you know that you're going to draw and create more when you get it, then I say go for it. So long as it's in your budget and you don't feel like you're stretching yourself too much to get it and you're not planning on using it you know because we all have lives and maybe work that we're um already doing so in my instance I was a web developer for 10 years right after college so I wasn't really drawing full-time um I took whatever time I had to learn how to draw but you know when I first started out it wasn't really traditional art supplies per se it was like Photoshop and the Cintiq and Wacom tablets and Lord knows I've got plenty of Wacom tablets. So I started out mostly digital. Um, of course I still did like the paper and the pencil, but I didn't do anything fancy. Like I didn't have markers, no watercolors. I didn't use watercolors at that point until, um, until more recently, I'd say in the last seven years or so, uh, on a regular basis. But it was mainly just digital stuff. However, I did always consistently have Eon boards. That was my go-to um, art supply because I was trying to learn how to be a comic book artist. So to me, that mattered because when I had comic book paper, I felt like I was working towards my goal of being a comic book artist one day, you know? So there are certain things that I think are very important to have at the get, you know, at the start, which is like the right good kind of bristle board okay maybe not good but definitely bristle board and not coffee paper um because then I had to show my work to editors and stuff at conventions so that was like the most important investment for me so I I singled that out um it's so much more different nowadays but when I was starting out like having the paper made you feel like you were actually learning how to draw comic books and you were actually doing it you know and it was the transition between being a web developer and a comic book artist, it had overlapped. So I had to basically um, slowly but surely do that. And having the paper made me feel like, you know, I was going to do it one day. Um, I don't know how I would have been if it was just copy paper and it was like 11 by 17 copy paper or maybe even like 8.5 by 11, which is what we all have lying around anyways. Um, but I took it seriously, so I felt like certain things I needed would make me feel like I was actually doing it. So let's just say uh, the two millimeter pen lead holder. I mean, that's pretty common, right? 
So that's the one thing that if you had it and you had your paper, you're good. You know, you felt like you were a comic book artist. Um, granted, you still had to draw interior pages, which for me was another thing. Like it wasn't enough just to draw, you know, like pinups and stuff, which I love doing, right? Like comic book covers. But I knew that for me to be an actual artist, I had to draw interior pages. It was like so hard to do, you know? I mean, you got, as you can see, backgrounds, buildings especially, and yeah, that characters that were moving. So you had basically had to step into that realm and that ring and actually just kind of, that was your thing. So, you know, I started with basics first and whatever I needed to be comic booky, that's, that's what I went for. And, um, of course, as the years went by, I started to start, I bought so many different pencils and then of course Copics, which was the start, right? It's like one marker, two markers, three markers, and then you start to go and buy the whole entire store, art store, because um, I had a, a Blix off of a, my, you know, half a mile from my apartment. I'd always walk there, and every time I had a little bit of money, I'd always get new art supplies and experiment. And if you looked at any of my old comics, like Lola, you could tell I did a lot of experimenting, and I wasn't shy about it, you know. That was my thing. Um, however, now it's been over 10 years since I've done this um, professionally. So I have an idea of what works for me and what feels good and what's right and what makes my work much easier. Um, there's certain pencils, certain types of ink that I prefer and paper. Like I know what will get my job done faster and the look I'm going for. So that took years of trying to figure it out. Granted, you know, if I didn't experiment with other supplies, I wouldn't have known. However, if I wasn't practicing my art at the same time, I would feel like I didn't spend my money and time wisely in a way, um, you know. But then again, like maybe some of us don't want to do this for work. We just enjoy the idea of creating art. And if that's what your goal is and you're not trying to draw interior pages like me and just go crazy, pull your hair out, you know, trying to meet deadlines for decades on end, then I say go for it. It is already hard enough there's already enough friction to start drawing so and and creating in general right so anything that makes you want to create and get excited to learn and enjoy it and there's like this image you have in your head or the stories you want to tell i don't see why why you can't go for it as long as you are within your means and trying to figure it out you know and um, you enjoy doing it and you're happy i mean it's the most productive thing you could do is is to be creative, like even if you're not directly drawing comic books or creating something that you could show to people, the act of creating art just overall is good for your life in a way that you could be creatively trying to solve problems and there's always there's always a use for it. So drawing in general is not even just this, the act and skill of putting pictures on paper. It is creatively trying to figure things out, you know, and I think I noticed that people who are good at creating or just being creative with problem solving have a tendency to be pretty good at art or they could pick it up pretty quickly if they needed to. So it's a good exercise. It works a certain part of your brain and I find it, that part of it alone is more important. So if you go into it thinking this will help me in other ways that I'm not aware of, I think that it is worth the time and effort to do it, you know. Um, just for fun, at the very least. But if you take it too seriously, I think it also shows in the art because then it starts to stiffen up and it's frustrating, right? And then you stiffen up even more because they were so frustrated. And even for someone like me who's done it for decades, if I'm tense, my art looks tense. Like everything is stiffened. It's a physical thing too. Your hands stiffen, your muscles stiffen. So it, 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 you could tell just by looking at it that it's stiff. It's not until you kind of let go and you're just approaching it a, a different way that everything starts to, you know, to kind of fall into place. Um, now, I'm just speaking from my own experience. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's some artists that are so good, like even when they're tense and they're stressed out, like their stuff looks fluid because they pre-planned on the layout stage. But let's just say they didn't do that during the layout phase and they're just drawing right onto the page like I do sometimes. Um, then it, there might be uh, something obvious. So, you know, it's, it's kind of things that I think about, but, um, 
we all have our own different reasons for doing something. So know what your reason is and then approach it that way instead of what everybody else is telling you and how they're telling you to approach it because it may not apply to you or it may not it may make you less likely to want to do something, especially something new or something as um as you know complex as creating art that you want, you know. Um that's that's the thing with creating art. I think focus on what you want and how you plan on getting there and what you're hoping to achieve. At least think about it first and then go for it. Um, I don't overthink a lot of things when it comes to art. I, I tend to just do it. Unless, of course, you know, I'm being um, commissioned to do something. Of course, I have to think about those things. But at the same time, like when it's the approach and... and um, how it's going to look, you kind of have to start drawing because you need to warm up and everything. So it's, so it's more fluid. And that's another thing, like it's a physical activity and we forget that drawing doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's a physical thing. You got to warm up. Like when you're going to the gym or you're exercising, you have to do that. And I know, you know, you hear that a lot, but, and I don't necessarily do it all the time, but at the same time, I know that if I did a few lines on the page and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll erase for like 15 minutes or something, um, it's still going to get me where I need to go. Eventually I get my work done. I wish I was, I wish it was like magic, but it, I guess it doesn't work that way. Anyhow. So, um, I was commissioned to do a piece for Eon for their Comic-Con booth. And, uh, of course, uh, Neil Wonderland was like the most obvious thing that we were going to do because of the way that the, the Neil Wonderland or Shangri-La, which is the name of the city, um, it's a lot like Tokyo, New York, so there's a lot of neon street signs, and we thought it'd look really cool to have it colored as the backdrop for um, the Comic-Con booth, and it was going to be huge, so, I mean, like, it was a no-brainer, like, we were going to approach it this way, and make it really kind of pop out, and just put everything we got into it, and just all sorts of things, like, movement and life so that when you walk past the booth at comic-con you kind of stop and you see and you feel like you're in this like little city you know so that was our concept and um i used you know the eon paper and the uh, eon inks for this just just so you guys kind of see what it looks like when you put it all together basically and i also used the white ink as well um yeah and you know i've, I've been i've used eon for all my career. Like I said, it was one of the first supplies that I got early on, even when I was um, practicing. I always had E on board, so I'm kind of attached to him. And, you know, Brett is really good at contacting artists, working with them, and making his supplies as good as they come. You know, like the, the way the paper feels, how the ink and the markers and the, the watercolors work with it. Like, he's very thoughtful about how he approaches the materials that he uses and how the comfort and the ease of stuff and how it looks especially and because he's a he's also a designer so um that kind of stuff matters to him and uh so everything he's got you know right now is as good as they come for what we do you know um so it was it was easy to to work on this stuff it wasn't like I had to like le relearn or, or figure out how the ink was going to look on this I on this page I, I knew what I was going to get just when I started this piece because I've been working with Eon for 15 years now at least so yeah that these guys are awesome Brett is awesome so um I decided to color this one digitally not only for speed because I was doing multiple things that time but also because the look and the feel of the book is I think it's appropriate because it's a uh, cyberpunk so of course I think digital colors make some more sense than traditional watercolors and inks and not to mention um when I worked on Lola and I was doing markers and you know watercolors that was time consuming for the schedule and it was expensive it looked really cool but I started getting headaches you know because I was using markers so much um that I had to switch to India inks, which I actually like how that looks more because you could move it around more. And you know, that's another thing. Like I had to try to get really good at using India ink so that the blend would be smooth and there wouldn't be any abrupt edges that I wasn't planning on like the skin and stuff. 
So, you know, I had to get really good at that. And, so, you know, you, of course you add a layer of water and then you, then you add the ink, which I think I'll do another piece pretty soon here. Um, so you guys can see what I mean. So, um, yeah, I, I used a clip studio paint for this. I used to use Photoshop, but I actually prefer the tools and the layout for, um, for digital colors on Clip Studio, I feel like it's more friendly to digital colors and they had really cool filters, you know, like the glow effects that they have here. This, that's what I'm using right now. That works really well for neon backgrounds and it just speeds up my process. So I don't have to focus on like making things look cool. I just have to focus on the colors, compositions and things like that, you know. Um, so I used that, uh, I think pretty sure that this is how I'm gonna do the book just the whole entire book which is in production right now so I'm really excited for that uh, so yeah this this was a fun piece to do it's a double page spread and I got to kind of flex my my style for this book so that was really cool and um, special thanks to Eon Productions of course as always for always being supportive of my work and for collaborating with me on this piece Thank you guys so much for your time and I will see you guys around.